is going on guys it is your boy Cecil here bringing us a video here today bringing us a photoshop tutorial on creature on very cool abstract noise very hopefully cool simplistic series kind of thing and as you guys know in the simplistic series we take something that looks very very complicated hopefully it looks complicated to you if it doesn't like whoops but hopefully it looks kind of hard to do but it's actually really, really easy in the turnout and it comes out a really cool concept you know you can of course create different things in the styles that we create in this actual video color scheme is a big big difference the pictures you use make a big difference um in the simplistic series i like to choose a lot of different photos and or at least choose a photo to use excuse me so that way people can kind of like i guess reference their lifestyle in the actual um header and or banner they're trying to promote right in a way so i mean like if you're like a vlogger like each letter could have been like a cool little vlogging picture something like that or somewhere you've been um what i love about this actual concept the most is like when you change the font you get this really cool just sort of like like the entire vibe quite literally changes if i just click on this kind of flip through the actual fonts you can see like the vibe changes a lot now of course the color scheme actually matters as well in my opinion you can get some really cool different if you change a color scheme around as well you'll probably find like a lot of dope sort of styles and just kind of really cool i don't know it just looks so different almost with a different font of course and uh, with the right font you probably choose a really cool style that you would like to do and with that being said guys two likes on the video equals a secret down below as always it most likely be the psd of the video that you guys are seeing here today uh, with that being said as well 97,000 subscribers on the day so i appreciate that very much for 3,000 away from 100k and uh yeah with that being said i think we're pretty much good to go um yeah we're gonna oh of course may, what you would want to do excuse me is find a picture off of google and when you guys are searching for pictures on google especially if you're working at 3000 by 1000 which i am right now which is a twitter header dimension um make sure you guys under your search let me see if i can get this really quick for you <laughs> under your searches guys as you can see i just kind of typed in landscape but what you want to do is make sure you go to where it says tools size larger than and pick the dimension in which you can find larger than i, I believe six megapixels is pretty much okay for a 3000 by 1000 searching at that little 200 pixels wouldn't do much damage but be careful which ones you pick you don't want to quick uh pick low quality pictures um yeah i guess that's pretty much that little little tip there so let's just get this thing going all right guys so go ahead and get this thing going of course when you have your picture already in set um let's just start off with our background so i have my background image or the color that we're using in this background today um and i'll show you guys the hex code in a very quick second i also have my um uh, background here that we're going to be using for the actual video to put in the text and uh last but not least we just have this here so i can reference it back and forth so i can just kind of make sure i get it as close as possible to what you guys would like to see um as an end result as well right because i took my time on that one so that's what i kind of like to reference also uh off of um but yeah the hex code to this background is a zero zero right here zero 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 four zero nine now this is basically really really close to being black now if you guys can tell hopefully you have a monitor that you can actually tell that it is a little bit of a blue tint so if i scroll down this right here you should be able to see a little bit of a difference i'm not changing the color that'd be let's go to here um no let's just go here click on this and what i'll do is i'll just copy this hex code so i can put it in here just so i can show you guys the difference right i put the hex code inside color overlay on the background here so if i just take this hue bar now on the right hand side and if i scroll down you'll see that the ch color changes it's still very very dark but also holds like a really cool value to it um where it's of course not black but it's very close to black but it also gives you a really good i guess i would say backpack into where you got to actually um put your actual color scheme in so you have the uh red you have your purple you have your blue you have like a nice little greenish tone yellows etc 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 the one that i use is a basically a blue tone so with that being said i guess secondly would probably be um getting this really cool sort of noisy background um i'm gonna end up doing is make a new layer over my background layer and on this new layer here i'm gonna make a nice big brush and make it of course zero hardness so that means right here on the top um, that means if I click on it, size, fairly big brush and zero hardness. If you guys wanted to know how I actually made this, um, like little red circles that kind of does it really quickly for you. If you move left and right while holding alt on your keyboard, um, this will go ahead and make your diameter go bigger or smaller. And then up and down is actually your hardness. So if you just bring your mouse all the way up, you'll make your hardness zero. And of course you move your mouse to the right. You'll make your, uh, mouse, your brush, excuse me, very big. Um, Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and click on this color here. And the reason being is because I want to change my color to a lighter blue than the background. So I'm going to change it to around somewhere, maybe around here. Hex code 121E2E. And the reason being, I'm going to click nice, just kind of like a nice little drag click right here. Nice little click up here. And you'll find yourself in a very nice, cool, sort of like, I don't know, it's like a rich tone, like very dark background. And a lot of people actually start off with backgrounds like this, and I highly recommend it if you guys were looking to kind of get um, a cool, like darker style backing, uh, backing, excuse me. Um, very cool kind of to, to kind of like, you know, just go with it, right? I just realized as well, I want to get my logo in here. Let's just drag that out for the copy over there. 
Um, but yeah, just alone, you can see how like kind of like rich it's starting to become. I'm gonna go ahead and with these two things right here, I'm gonna click on the actual the new brush we just made and that background layer. I'm gonna control J to make a duplicate of it, and then control E is gonna merge it all together. If you don't know the commands, you can simply just drag the two layers while you click on them into this little new, new layer spot right here. And then if you want to merge them, just simply go to where it is. I haven't done this in a while. Merge layers. There it is. Okay. So <laughs> now that you've done that, you want to go to select. You want to go to, excuse me, filter, noise, add noise. And we're going to add a, quite a bit of noise with the actual distri uh, distribution being on Gaussian. I'm going to go ahead and go to like, maybe like six. Um, let's go like four. Ah, I mean, if you guys want to go ahead and kind of like not make it as permanent as I was just about to bake it. You can go ahead and right click on this layer here and create a uh, convert to a smart object. That way any effects and or any like CC changes that you end up doing, it actually changes it and or keeps it. So if I want to go to distort, um, Susan distort, um, noise, add noise, and I want to add nine noise, you say like, all right, that's way too much. You can go ahead and just click on it again, go into it say, okay, maybe like five looks pretty good. Press okay. And then so on and so forth. So I'm going to keep it on like five for now. I forgot the honestly, the, the setting that I actually put, but the noise level is also really, really kind of like opportunities to like opportunist, opportunistic to what the color scheme actually happens to be. Some more noise looks really good on different colors. So be mindful of that. Um, and also less noise on some colors also look better, but of course a little bit of noise adds a little bit of texture and it comes out really, really good. So what I'm going to go ahead and do next is probably going to be, um, I guess we might as well just do this little sort of background part here with these little cool little patterns here. Now, the pattern that I actually have, I'll put in the description for you guys. Um, and I actually don't have it open as well, so let me go open it really quickly. Hey, uh, Sessa, did you just transition to a uh, cool little self plug here on your new pack? Totally just did. Um, but kidding. Uh, this is the pack that I actually wanted to use because I'm going to give you guys this texture, um, excuse me, pattern right here, which is this one right here. So I'll give you guys this pattern for free and whatnot, and I probably the PSD that you try, you'll get in the 200 likes, excuse me. Um, if not, I'll probably put this on a different like single download. It's a very, very easy thing to do as well. You can just do it in Illustrator and or if you have my pattern pack as well, another self plug. Whoops. Um, yeah, I'm just going to drag this in here just now so we can just stop talking about it. Uh, okay. So the reason being is I'm just going to press Control J a few times and make it a little more darker and I'll merge it all together. Um, you won't have to do that, so don't worry about it too much. I'm going to make it white so that way you guys can actually see it. So what I want to go ahead and do now is I'm going to replicate the kind of thing I did here. I kind of spaced them very, very well, I believe, in this little section here. So I'm going to show you guys how you would go about it. So just pretend like the backing isn't actually there for a sense, but I'm going to take my actual marquee tool here. Uh, on a new layer, by the way, I'm on a new layer. As you guys can see, I'm going to put this below this, put this below this as well. Um, that's the pattern layer. So... On a new layer here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of kind of hover over this. Now, if, while you're holding shift, you can see this little plus button right next to the actual marquee tool selection. This will go ahead and allow you guys to uh, create multiple ones. So I'll make a nice little small little stick right here. Then we'll make a fairly big uh, square right here and a fairly big square right here. I wanted to kind of mock it so that way you guys can see actually how easy and simple this was actually done. So now that I can do that, I'll get rid of that really quickly. I'm just going to quickly fill this in with any color whatsoever. So you can fill it in with uh, alt meaning uh, alt backspace and or control backspace or right click fill you can just use go ahead and just use color and that's perfectly fine as well it doesn't really matter whatsoever because the point of this here is to kind of house what's happening for the actual pattern overlay so with that being said i'm going to go ahead and kind of say hey let's bring this right above it so i have to probably make it a little more bigger and if i don't want to make it bigger that's okay what i can actually end up doing is making separate ones so i'll go ahead and just say hey that's a separate one here that I'm gonna make a duplicate by just simply just holding alt and dragging the layer above it. So I'm holding alt, dragging the layer above it and or just dragging into here or pressing control J. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna put more on this side here. Oops, uh, we could just say, hey, one of these for these two here, drag it over. And then these can be just that one right there. So it's just two different ones, I guess you would say. Uh, however many you have to put in. And also, I'm, only do I'm doing it with an actual texture pattern. So you guys don't have to use layer styles. It's a little bit complicated for some people. But I'm just using two different ones. I'm putting them over both of them here. So what I can do now is I'll just press control on the actual thumbnail of the red color here. That backing that you guys created for yourselves. So we can actually house the pattern in. Right click with the marquee tool selection. What's going to give you a select inverse option. Then what you got to do is simply go to your patterns, right? And press delete and delete. And then control D to deselect or right click deselect. Get rid of this. And now you have your patterns looking all cool. Where they're supposed to be all that cool stuff. And I think it looks actually pretty cool. So now I'm going to throw my logo just for the hell of it. I'm just going to put it right where it should be somewhere in the middle kind of section, right? <clears throat> now we can actually do our text. So I'm going to do the color actually a little bit later on, but I can actually do it right now. It's not that difficult. 
um, at all, honestly. But what you want to do is I'm just going to simply just control click on both of these right here. And these things right here, by the way, are just your patterns. We're just going to group them together. And that way I can just go ahead and just double click on the actual group and then change my actual gradient to the gradient that I want. So if you guys want to get the same gradient that I have and our build to it and whatnot, uh, I would just say my scale 45 for the, the people who just want to keep it on those even five intervals like myself. Um, green here. Uh, the green here is 2DFBBA. Press OK. And on the right hand side here, which is the shadows, but in this case right here, it's kind of like just giving us a two different shades of colors um, is 06192E. Press OK. Press OK again. And you're going to press OK once more time. And that's, excuse me, geez, I got the hiccups. What's going on? Um, the cool little color scheme that you guys are going on, you can start seeing it actually come to law, come alive. And uh, if you guys want to now, you can go ahead and just convert this to a smart object. That way, we can make a new layer. We can clippy mask this to a new layer, right? That new layer we just created, we can clip mask it to that layer right here below it, which is the patterns we just created. Take our marquee tool once again, right here. And then hover over a few spots. Uh, we'll say right here, we'll do one like right here, and like right here, and I'm holding shift again like you guys saw, and I'm going to change my foreground color to white, and then I can press alt, backspace, and or right click, fill, co uh, content, white, press ok, right click, deselect, and now a few spots are now white as well to kind of make it look nice and cool, and uh, yeah, last part's coming up right here, which happens to be the actual text part of this, so I'm going to go ahead, and oops, this is, come on, no, don't do that to me. Uh, what I'll do for now is I'll just delete this as I already have it saved. I'm gonna delete that example from the bottom because if I clicked, I was trying to click to actually create a new um, text file, but since the text is so big under, it's gonna say, hey, you wanna edit this? No Photoshop, I'm not trying to edit it. I'm gonna go ahead and just type in the word Sesso again. <laughs> Bring this up to where it needs to be. I'll put it right below the logo. And I'm gonna use this font here. I believe this font is called Ancient Greek. I don't know if it's, um. I think it's a default font, honestly. I think it's a default font, but whatever font you guys want to go ahead and portray for the style itself, I would say use that font because I, like I said in the beginning of the video, as you guys probably hopefully saw a little bit, um, different fonts create different effects and which just creates a different style too and looks really, really good. And I'm gonna just kind of move this to an offset right side, still sort of in the center, but kind of, it just feels cool. Um, Sorry about that. If this is like bugging the hell out of you, not me in the middle, moving that over to the right. Anyway. Now that I have my text here, I can go ahead and just drag in my background, which you guys hopefully downloaded for yourselves. Drag this in, put it above the text, and then right click, click, uh, create clip mask, just like so. Now we have this right here. So, of course, naturally, you probably want to get your colors to be a little bit different. And who the hell knows? Maybe if your um, background color happens to be a really cool background color, like abstract, whatever, and like high, I guess, energy in different colors, that can be really cool to kind of keep it as is. But for my case here, I want to kind of mute this a little bit and use a different sort of um, color scheme. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my gradient map right here on my adjustments tab. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and also create a clip mask to this gradient map to this background here as well, which will then automatically clip mask it to the actual um, layer below it, which is also this text layer, right? So uh, it's probably hard to tell. Hopefully you can just tell that it's actually now clip mask on this now because it was white for a second. Um, so now I'm going to do, I'm going to scroll down because I already have it saved. So this color right here. Now, if you guys wanted to go, it can choose this color as well. This one right here is not pure black again, by the way. I'm not using pure black on any of these. You can kind of see it's kind of like a nice little dark, 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 dark blue. But black, if I change it to black for a second, you can see there's a difference. But since it's not pure black, it's giving it a little bit more, I guess you would say, like light exposure. It's not making it kind of like highlights and shadows. It's giving you highlights and shadows, but kind of like this really cool neutral feel to it. And I like how that looks. So for this color here, it's 000307 for the left hand side. And then for the right hand side here, the hex code is 991443. I'm gonna press OK. And now, just in case you guys wanna know how to how to actually create your own little gradient sort of um pack in a way and kind of like go through them and kind of save them just press new it'll create a new one for you guys you don't want it anymore delete it all that cool stuff i would i would highly recommend it for you guys to start saving gradients because you can find some really cool ones if you kind of flip through you might be like hey i want to use this gradient because look how cool that looks that looks pretty cool what the fuck um okay we're just gonna go with this though all right okay yikes really though that kind of looks like dope as shit okay Okay, so, so. Um, anyway, so I like this right here. So now I'm going to know how to do is the sort of little part here where it's actually pretty much done. But in a sense, I want to do these little lines. Um, <laughs> excuse me. For these little lines here, I kind of see how a little bit, it's a little bit empty in a, in a way. I mean, it's not really empty at all, but it's kind of like noisy in a way. But I feel like the actual background itself is needs a little, need a little more heightenedness to it. So I ended up doing was taking a nice little pen tool here with a new layer. Take a pen tool. 
and going about yourself and just kind of like highlighting some of these corners, some of these like, you know, uh, how do you say, like these little empty spaces, saying like right here, I'm just gonna make this go straight down. And making straight lines, by the way, I'm just holding shift. So I'm gonna go here and be like, hey, that looks pretty cool right there. I wanna zoom in a little bit more, make that, oops, make that pretty even. I'll fix that for you guys, boom. Right, I'll move that over, kind of make it a little more even. I'll say I'll make one right here. Right, and then final, put one like right here. Actually, I'm just making it go the other way. So that, way. oh, by the way, you guys are noticing probably like, why is mine connecting? Sorry, I didn't say that I, what I was doing exactly, but I'll do this one over again, and I'll do this one over here. Right, click, hold shift, click. Holding control, clicking off the path, going back to another spot, and then clicking again. Simply all I, all I did. I'm gonna use a brush tool now for a second. You'll be like, wait, we didn't do anything with the path. It's okay. Go to your brush tool really quick, which is B on your keyboard. And then if you wanna right click, just bring up this table, change your size to two on a default brush and make your size, your hardness, excuse me, uh, 100. If two is too thick for you, go with uh, one, obviously. And if that's too small for you, go with a, a thicker, um, uh, a, a little bit thicker brush. So I would say like either three, don't go past four because it gets a little bit too noisy. We want it to be as, as clean as possible. And on this new layer here, you can just use with the pen tool selected, right click, um, stroke path, tool, brush. Okay, that felt like a little bit of door right there. Tool, brush, are you ready? Um, Right click, del uh, delete the path. And now we have a little white, little sort of like very cool lines going all over the place. So what I'm gonna do now is make a new layer right above that. Mask that new layer to this layer right here. Right, so you can just have this little layer floating here empty. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this nice little green. And the way I'm gonna do that <coughs> is either you can just use your brush, right? You see my brush is actually selected. I'm gonna hold Alt, and then when you have Alt, uh, when you have, excuse me, if you're holding Alt while the brush uh, tool is selected, it'll give you the eyedropper tool as a shortcut. And I want to click on that color right there. I zoomed in pretty quick, or, or uh, far in. And I'm gonna go ahead, and just hover over some of these spots. I want to kind of, kind of opposite right here. I wanna have that like nice depth there. I wanna. Put that green here. It's over here already. I'm gonna put it on this side. It's on this side, so I'm gonna put it on this side. And then I'll kinda let it go down a little bit. And this was all white right here, so I'm gonna kinda go ahead and say, hey, let's put that little green there as well. So, honestly, I think you're pretty much done. And uh, I think you are, but let me show you this really cool, simple text. And you're probably like, you just made it smaller or whatever. No, let me quickly show you though. I'm gonna make it a quick little black box again. And actually, it's not a black box, by the way. It's the darkest color on your banner. So the way I ended up selecting that is I'm just gonna get this as close as possible. I'm using the rectangle marquee tool again. I'll just say that's pretty much good for now. I'm just gonna quick fill with any color right now. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and just go to here, go to where it says color overlay, click on this, and then basically just find whatever the darkest color is. So go to your the darker spots of your banner and just slip with a uh, color picker, hover over, excuse me, click and hover over the darkest spot. You'll say, hey, that's pretty, pretty dark right there, but it's not pure black, but it'll still match the banner in a way. Press OK. Press OK again. And I'll type in the word simplistic. Oh, that's why. Get rid of that. OK, let's just go ahead and do it. Click off the canvas. All right, a little further up. There we go. Simplistic. I hope I spelt it right. I didn't even check. Um, this is a yikes if I did. Int. Simple, of course. Ahem. Simplistic, there we go, ta-da. Let's go ahead and change the actual font name to um this one here. I think this is like the um, off-white font, is it not? What I'll do here, slash, slash. I'll make the slashes smaller just by simply using this right here, right? The, of course, obviously making the actual font size smaller. And what I'll do is I'm gonna highlight, uh, it's just, I, I thought it was kind of clever, I don't know if you guys probably saw, but S-I-P-L kind of so simple, right? And then simplistic is kind of like, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, a word that goes with simple. Can we just think about it for a second? Um, and then just take these few last words here. It, you probably won't get the same exact thing as me, but I just thought it was kind of cool if I kind of highlight these last four ones. Um, I'm in my head, sorry, I was just saying if this spelt right, is this spelt right, is this spelt right? I think it is. I should be a pro at spelling simplistic by now. But all you have to do is click this right here. Right? And it'll kind of give you guys that little simple italic, which kind of use for like degrees or like trademark and stuff like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and now split this apart a little bit with the VA. So we're using a lot of the, uh, lot in the character table, by the way. If you don't have the character table up, go to Windows right here, Window, and then go to Character, and it'll bring up that character table, and you can just drag it into your nice little toolbar here. Just like if it's out here, you can drag it right in here. Okay? Zoom out. I'll take the word Istic, and I'll make it green, just like so, and I'll make it a nice little uh, kind of like highlighted more green. There we go. Press this here. 
and I'm going to go with, I think we are done. So that is the very quick banner. Hopefully, of course, you'll have, not that quick. The video is still under 20 minutes, okay? Um, and I got to talk for one minute. So that's it. That's all I got. Anyway, uh, it's really cool. Like I said before, just change the fonts around a little bit more with your or your name or in the background. It'll look really, really dope. Um, color scheme is also like a really big point. So make sure you guys choose some color schemes. Now, really quickly as well, there's no way I'm going to get 20 minutes now. I want to show you guys this. Make it a color. If you go and say, hey, I want to really use this blue, okay? You want to really use this blue. Whatever blue you end up using, if you press control I, that's a complimentary color. I'm a good I'm giving you guys my 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 biggest secret I've never showed you guys. <laughs> uh press control I to find whatever matching and or opposite color that you want to use for the banner and watch how like really pretty it looks. Alright. I'm done. Two likes on the video, you can see it down below. Um, all that good stuff. I want to be the PSD of the video that you guys see here today. Once again, I love you guys so very much. Thank you guys for the support. 97,000 subscribers. We're gonna be freaking oh my god, it's gonna be ridiculous. I love you guys. I'll tell you guys later. So that's why HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later.